welcome back to Satisfactory. Um, we've just unlocked tier two, past the first milestone. We're gonna look at all that in a minute. But basically in this episode, I'm starting to work with the Molecular Analysis Machine, or MAM, in the Object Scanner. And I've been furthering my assembly line especially on the iron side of things. There's more items and I'm automating all that. So basically I'm going to say this is about MAM and assembly lining. So anyway, here we are in Satisfactory. Just so what I've been saying makes a little bit of sense. We just look here um, at our workstation or whatever they call this thing. Um, this is what we had just unlocked and it gave us these new things that we can make. Um, and um, we have the molecular analysis machine which we're going to look at in a minute. The next milestone for us to go through is this. I'm looking forward to this because this will give us a chainsaw, make it easier to make biomass. But then we also get solid biofuel, which is more efficient than biomass, so we'll have to look into that. Um, and then what do we have here? Um, more inventory slots. Well, nothing wrong with that. Okay, and so last time at the end I went over here to the equipment workstation and I made this thing called an object scanner, which is this guy right here. Um, and the beacon. Those things seem to be getting removed from the game, but I might check them out anyway. But anyway, if you look at the tab thing here, you see you actually have two hand slots. And you can select what things you want in it. When I'm fighting, I like to have a healing item, like berries or nuts, and the Xeno Zapper. But when I go exploring, then it might be nice. Well, hold on. Shift left click that in. Or I guess I gotta drag it over. Put the object scanner, make it the equipment workstation, in the other slot, and then if you use the mouse scroll you can switch between the Xeno Zapper and the object scanner. Now the thing is this thing needs to be calibrated. You gotta set it for objects that it can scan for just so I don't have to hear it keep beeping. And that's what you use this, the molecular analysis machine. Basically, uh, so far we have these two stages unlocked where we can look at alien organisms or uh, nutrients. I've already done some nutrients. You know that I've been finding the berries and the nuts basically had enough of them in the inventory, dragged them over to here into their respective slots. You see each slot has a cost as to how many you need to bring in in order to uh, unlock it and then basically by doing that then your object scanner will then scan for these items. Um, so one thing I haven't found yet is the uh, bacon Agaric, agaric, or something like that. Uh, so if I find some of them, then I can drag and drop those over. One thing I didn't drag and drop over yet was the uh, hog remains, which I do have. So I can at least show that process here. Where is it? Here I keep my hog remains. Got a beacon, portable miner, and a spare Xeno Zapper there. Um, let's see here. We go to alien organisms. These can be scanned for also. But obviously, you got to encounter one first and get something from it. Get something of that drop so you can drag and drop it in here and scan for them in the future. So, like, I have 11 hog remains by now. Um, sorry, I got to. Zoom out to see here. And so, uh, cost, uh, 
all I need is one, but I have 11, so it'll take one of these 11 to unlock this. But you just drag and drop it over. Or actually, I guess you didn't actually have to do that. Just hit this thing at the bottom. Okay, so now our object scanner will be able to scan for hogs, I guess, too. Um, but yeah, so I'll see. I think I saw a spitter before. I don't know if it hovers in the same area, but I might be able to find that. Um, I don't know if I've seen these at all. I've seen those insects that fly at you. You saw that last time. Not exactly sure what they're called, but this is something I can explore in the game maybe in another uh, episode. But basically now our... Like I left click and select what I want to scan for. I can scan for nuts. Or berries. I guess you don't scan for the... Uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the hogs or the alien life forms, it's just like, I don't know what that really unlocked for me there, I don't know, well, we'll see, it's a step, so I did something, I accomplished something, so anyway, um, let's put my hog remains back, I don't need to keep them on me, keep them safe right here, but I do keep healing roots and nuts on me, here, let me, let me just keep these up towards the top. Alright, so anyway, what else have I been doing? Well, over here in the area where I just have cement being mined and uh, concrete being, I mean limestone being mined, turned into concrete, stored here. Uh, the biomass burner to power this is back here. Um, I've hooked up to the same thing since it could take a, it could power a few more things. Is I have a container here that I'm going to keep leaves in, and a container here that I'm going to keep um, wood in. As you see, the wood assembly line is kind of stopped there midstream, and um, this one makes uh, wood into biomass. This one makes leaves into biomass. Then back here I have conveyor belts into a merge to put it in here, so this is where my mile mass would end up. I'm using what I've got. I mean, I don't know that it's going to pile up all that great, but we'll see when we unlock the chainsaw what happens. Um, so, I've totally reorganized my iron assembly line. This is what I got going right now, and I'm just running the front end of it right now. Basically, I organize the power into sections. But right now, this biomass burner powers just the miner and the smelter. That's it. So if, if, if this is getting backed up or something like this and I want to kind of stop this and just let things cycle through, I can always turn off this burner and it'll stop that process. Although I don't know that that would be necessary. But I was thinking, since I have a second thing down there, I could power another miner and another smelter and then kind of merge them into the assembly line to see if that increases productivity. I don't know. I'll have to experiment with that. Or maybe I'll have one smelter go to this section and one go to this section in the assembly line. That might be what I'll do in the future, um, just to increase productivity. But anyway, the next section, and this is powered by the second burner here through this power pole and what it is is um, this is making iron plates this constructor yep and this is making iron rods over here so they're all on the same power thing along with one less constructor there that's making nails so those three things are making stuff right now. And right now I'm running them so I can fill up these containers with plates, rods, and nails. If I run the further part of the assembly line, then it wouldn't give these things a chance to build up. 
see they're starting to build up in there now because I stopped the rest of the assembly line. So you see these conveyor belts are stopped, the plates are stopped here, the rods are stopped here. So it's not going into making any of the further stuff. Just, I wanna run it like that until I fill these things up more. And then once they're filled, I'll run the rest of the assembly line too and keep the process going. But on another burner here, I have two um, assemblers, which we just unlocked in the last episode. So I was gonna show those in this episode, using the assemblers in the assembly line. They basically take in two things. So like for example here, after the plate constructor, you know, there's a storage for the plates, but the conveyor can go out of it. It'll stop if the next thing isn't running, though. But it takes in plates, and it takes in nails, and this makes my reinforced plates. The reinforced iron plates. And so, um, I have it off right now, just so these further things, the plates, rods, and nails can build up. Then I'll turn on this section where the plates and nails go into making reinforced plates and then the nails and rods go into making rotors so this is set to make rotors and then of course there'll be a storage for those here right now these are empty because I was running the whole thing along the length and things were all going to the back end so that's why I'm just running the front end now here you see some of the rotors that were made and they're going into this assembly here because rotors plus plates equals smart plates and then rods plus um, reinforced plates make um, these things what are they called uh, modular frames so basically what I'm doing right now is building up all my plates rods and screws to have tons of them in there, fill those containers, then I'll power the middle part of the assembly line, fill these containers, and then power the whole thing so that we get everything going through to the end. This shouldn't be running. No, it says it's off and there's no fuel in it, but now and then the graphic just goes anyway. But as you see, I have um, basically these two at the end. The um, smart plates and the um, modular frames at the end of the assembly line so when I'm ready to make those they get made and there's the storage for them back here so basically that's the approach I'm taking I'm, I'm putting the storage containers right in line but basically for that to work out well I'm basically going to have to run you know the front half here get these filled up and then I'll add this half here to make the next stuff the reinforced plates and the uh, uh, the rotors and then after and because that'll be running and these will already be kind of full these won't get depleted so much and basically you know what I mean I kind of like need to build up the front part of the assembly line into storage and then build up the middle part of the assembly line and then the last part you know till things all collect into storage and then i could say all right good i got a lot of stuff made i haven't changed the copper section at all this one rather than having everything in the middle i mean having a, a container in the middle i basically just put a splitter in so that basically you know it gets mined, smelted, and then the ingot split here where it goes into a constructor to make the wires and a constructor to make the new item, uh, which is called a copper sheet. Or, a, yeah, I think it's called a copper sheet. And then here, since the wires can also make cables, I have a splitter, so the wires go into there to be made into cables, and half of them go into here just to be stored as wires. 
you know it's a simpler section because there's um, simpler stuff to be made and actually just to kind of illustrate this for you this is kind of how you work that out it's good to just go to the crafting bench and see at least for most of the things and this is how you can organize your assembly lines is basically you look here um, copper ingots that's the first thing and iron ingots ingots are made by the smelters first item in the process but you don't need to keep the ingots because the ingots themselves don't I mean you you basically might as well process them into something else so as far as irons concerned your first stage and this is how I organize my assembly line is I make plates and the rods everything's made from plates and rods as far as irons concerned so no reason to keep iron ingots might as well make them into plates and rods and then um, the reinforced iron plates are made from screws and iron plates so you can have your plates go with the screws to make reinforced plates now the screws themselves are made from the rods so that's why I have my assembly line go to the first section where it makes rods and plates then kind of like right after that I split the rods up where some of them go to making screws and some of them go on further all right and then basically you know the screws and some of the plates get merged together to make uh, using an assembler to make reinforced iron plates uh, and then there's rods and reinforced iron plates that make the uh, the modular frames now it doesn't show here the smart plates or smart plating because that one you can't make manually it literally has to be produced but um, when you open up the assembler's view as to set it to what it's going to make you can see the uh, recipe there basically it takes um, reinforced no it's rotors and rods I believe I think the smart plating is actually I'll have to check we'll look at it but basically there you go now here's the copper sheet that I talked about from the copper section so for your copper basically have all your ingots made into wire or copper sheets because the copper sheets and the wire are both made from ingots you know so those are the two things you need to make first and then half your cable half of your wires can go into making cable and the rest of them stay as wire because some recipes require wire some require cable some both you know and then there'll be obviously some recipes looking for copper sheets soon so that's why I'm making them now here you can manually make your um, wood or leaves into biomass but um, yeah and then remember that rotor that I have there in the assembly line make hog protein that's new well anyway to the rotor remember that's just basically made from screws and rods so that's why my assembly line is the way it is basically um, you can just look at the formulas for what goes into making what and that's why I did that stuff so hog protein obviously is just made from hog remains Let me see, what does this do? Uh, used for medical purposes. Oh, so this might be a better healing thing to have on me. Hmm. Huh. So maybe I should just do that. Although I gotta probably look that up and see what healing they provide. 
but obviously it might as well make them. I don't think hog remains on their own do you any good. Alrighty, so anyway, you know, that's what I wanted to show is how things are progressing. Um, I'm going to let this stuff run. Actually, I think I'm going to store this stuff here until I find out more about it. Um, I'm going to let this stuff run to build up my uh, front end stuff, the rods and plates and screws. And then after those containers are full, I can turn on the rest of the thing. I basically make periodic trips, you know, running around getting leaves and wood and stuff. But it'll be great to unlock this and try out this chainsaw. That'll allow me to make more and more biomass. And this solid biofuel, i got to look into that. And I know that that's better than biomass, so we'll see. Looks like i got enough stuff on me to unlock this next level, so let's do it. Milestone reached. Biofuel will ensure maximum efficiency of biomass burners. To aid in biofuel production, you are now capable of removing foliage that consists primarily of wood. Additionally, R&D inflated your pocket dimension. Alright. Now, what I gotta look at here, first of all, is what goes into making biofuel. Because I know the chainsaw <laughs> is made of biofuel. I mean, uses biofuel to operate. So, solid biofuel is made from biomass. Basically, you craft biomass into biofuel. So, you, three of them will make four biofuel. Or eight, no, eight make four biofuel, but supposedly it's more efficient. Let's see if we, um, what we need to make a chainsaw. Test this out. Uh, chainsaw, what do we need? Uh, I got that. I need about a bunch more rods. Let's just grab a stack of rods. Grab a stack of screws. Good on that. Alright. Stack of rods, stack of screws, and we'll make a chainsaw. I think I have some biomass in my inventory. I don't know. No, I'll get some real quick. Uh, where are we going? Getting a little tired. I've been spending a lot of time and making this thing the way it is. So let's just grab a stack of rods. Grab a stack of screws. Come on. Yeah, they're building up, so it's good for me to run this front end until they're full. Then I'll start running the back end. Most of those other stuff, it, the are made by the assemblers um, are are a little bit slower so when I start this up it won't drain this front end too too much or too too badly oh is the launcher coming back or is it still going up I was trying to get a picture of it. I wanted to have a good screenshot. All my screenshots are going to be looking to light if I just keep taking pictures of my assembly line. Hold on here, let me try this. Can I jump on top of you? No. Denied. Hold on. Oh, come on. 
I want to get a good picture. I know I always do things out of order. I'm totally unorganized as a YouTuber. Let's get this claw out of the way. Yeah, because that's a big part of what this episode's about, the assembler. For the assembly line. There we go. Let's put you back. All right, now what we're doing is we're making a chainsaw. And I'm gonna try it out. I know of a tree right away that I wanna take down. Um, but do I have biomass on me? If I have biomass on me, it'll show me in my inventory right now. It'll show it here. Yeah, I do have some on me. So I should be able to make a little bit of biofuel to power the chainsaw. So let's go to the equipment workstation here and let's make chainsaw. Oh, I already have it selected. Okay, good. Just one. There we go. Now. Now, let's see. R is reload. Is that what I got to hit to... Uh, uh, I think I have to actually make biofuel first. So let's see here. Solid biofuel. I should have some bio enough biomass on me to make it. Um, solid biofuel. Yeah, I do. Um, you're not actually running it right now, are you? That's stupid. Alright, let's check this out. Uh, that tree there. It crashes up through my building. My platform. And if I want to expand that away, I kind of... Now, I don't know if they regrow or how stuff works like this, but this is one that is in my way. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, now it's out of the way. Now, let me check something here. How much did that give me, that tree? That was a pretty big tree. Hey, let's do this. I don't like the I don't like the fact that it sounds like that thing's running even when you're not using it. How much wood did I get? Four wood? Seriously? Is that all I got from that? Sixteen leaves. Fifteen solid biofuel. That's what I just made, I think. And biomass. Yeah, um... Uh, it's looking like I didn't get much wood out of it. Yeah, let's do this. Let's switch between that and the chainsaw. No, that didn't work. Got to be a bigger tree, I guess, for it to really count. It gets more nuts.
But that's all you get. I don't know if that's going to be worth it or not. Man. I'll try one more. I mean... Sixty-nine. Okay, well that's looking a lot better. So now maybe you know if I'm going to be getting amounts like that, who are you? I don't know if that was one of the things I was supposed to catch for the molecular. I mean I don't like to go after animals that don't bother me. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, and then I'm going to check something here. Let's see if this biofuel, how efficient it is. I still have some that I made, and before I convert the rest into biofuel, I want to just kind of do a quick little check. Just to make the episode a little more informative. All right, let's see here. I'm going to take the biomass out. Actually, maybe I should. All right, here's biomass. Pop it in. Kind of getting a feel for how much it goes down. All right. All right. Now let's put in biofuel, solid biofuel. That's wood. Flower petals. I'll use the flower petals to burn up my stuff. Convert it into the. You now that's wood. Solid biofuel. Pop that in there. Yeah, it seems to be moving down a little bit slower. So it's probably worth making it. So in here. Oh, that's where my concrete is, sorry. Alright, here I'm going to put in leaves on the left side. All right. On the right side, I put wood. Okay. Now here, this is my biomass. And this is where the biomass will be put after I start up. But these flower petals, <laughs> they're going in first. Let's get them burnt down. Get things started. Now, I don't have the, uh, this process going into uh, making the biofuel, because I've only just unlocked it. There we go, so now let's put biomass in, and that should burn for a while, enough to complete the stuff, I think. So everything's going to end up here, as biomass. Huh. <sighs> Probably what I'm going to do 
because I'm not going to be able to add another constructor to this. So I'll just have this uh, burner to do the, mi uh, the limestone and concrete. And then if I make a converting constructor here, I'm going to have to, uh, or I could just put a, a bench here, man. A workbench. Let's just see. Eventually, no, that, that ain't. That, hold on here. Crafting bench. Yeah, there we go. So, for example, I gotta be able to. Oh, I gotta be able to reach this. So if I take like the biomass out, go here, go to solid biofuel, boom. Now I should probably make a constructor for it. Which means I have to make a separate burner just for it. Just to power these three constructors to make bio, solid biofuel. Yeah, so that's what I'll eventually do. Yep, I want to do it on screen in this episode, but I'll show it to you next episode when it's done. So I guess that'll be it. Thank you for joining me and monitoring my progress and how it's all coming along here. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's all good. It's all going pretty well. I'm enjoying myself. This is awesome possum. So thank you for joining me. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, help, uh, help the small but mighty YouTuber out here. Um, peace out. Take care, stay free, see you next time.